Like I said, if you want anointing, anointing is not cheap. If you want anointing, if you want to be used by God, we must live a life of personal holiness. And when I say personal holiness, I want to make sure that we understand that we're not confusing personal holiness with the holiness that we receive from God when we become ch children of God. The positional holiness given us to, in Christ. We are Christians. We serve the Lord. We are in the church. However, personal holiness is what we do when we get closer to God. I'm going to read James 4, 7, 8. I don't know who's using, doing the computer uh, today, but I want them to be uh, ready. James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. It says, submit therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come, to close, come close to God. Another translation said, come near to God and God will come near to you. It's what you do, your part. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. James speaking to the church. And purify your hearts, us, believers. You double-minded, you and me, believers, the church. So personal, when I say personal holiness, it's something that we have to do. Are you with me? Are we still friends? Amen. So first I'm going to say what personal holiness is not. I want to make sure that we understand the context of what I'm going to preach today. So personal holiness is not, there's always two extremes. There's always an extreme that will always tend to go further to the left and one that will tend to go further to the right. Pastors always, always, uh, I, I like the, 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 the verse that he always says, Proverbs 8, verse 20, if you don't mind. He said that wisdom will go on the path of righteousness. Yes? In the middle of the paths of justice. This is holiness. When you are on the path of righteousness. Not extreme left or extreme right. So the extreme left is hyper grace. Lord, you are my sanctifier. You are my holiness. I cannot be holy. I'm too weak. Once saved, always saved. John Calvin in the 1500s came with this doctrine. You are my holiness, Lord. You know I'm weak. I am a nobody. Um, I cannot be holy. And, and we package Christianity and we stamp it with Jesus loves you. But inside, it's empty. That's not holiness. Unfortunately, the pulpits of America one day will be judged because of the gospel they preach. One of the, one of the pastors, Mario Mor Morello, says, big screens, skinny jeans, and fog machines. Praise the Lord. That's not holiness. The other extreme is the legalism. Morals without Christ is just religion. Trying to impress God. The way I dress, the way I recite scripture. Nobody looked more holy than the Pharisees walking around in those black robes. And people were saying, holy, holy, holy. Inside, they were putrefied. They were rotten inside. Why? There's no relationship. That's religion on the right side. When they put morals above the blood of Jesus Christ. That's just as demonic as the other one. 
We are called to be priests. Turn to the person right next to you and say, you are a priest. You are a priest. If you don't mind to put up 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you might proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into a marvelous light. You are a chosen generation, a priesthood. Revelation 1, verse 5 and 6. To him who loves us and released us from our sins by his blood, and he made us into a kingdom, priests to his God and Father. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. You are called to be a priest. Once you receive Jesus Christ, once you receive salvation, you become a priest. Now though we are accepted and Jesus accepted us and we're saved. It's, it's not enough. You have a calling and you have to be worthy of that calling. Put up Ephesians 4.1. Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling which you have been called. You are called to be a priest. We have to walk worthy of the calling of a priest. Are you with me? Hello? Amen. So first, we have the priesthood of the sons of Eli. In Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 2 and chapter 3, we read about Eli. He was old. He was undisciplined. He was obese. He was fleshly. He was blind. He had no vision. He wouldn't rebuke his sons. His sons were priests or preachers. They were doing church stuff. But they were sleeping with women in church. They were stealing from the sacrifices of the Lord. Full of religion, but no relationship. The Bible said that they did not know the Lord. And for a season, God said, they can do that. They can preach. They can teach. They can sing in a worship. They can do media. They can serve in the kitchen. They can do whatever ministry you do in church. And if there's one church where everybody's involved is this church. You'll see it tomorrow at the, at the meeting. Including the little ones. Everybody's involved in a ministry. However, we have to be careful to not hide under our service. Because the priests of the sons of Eli were serving the church. We're doing church stuff. But they did not know the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 2 says, they were actually useless men. There was a, a little boy in the temple. And the Bible says that Samuel, a little boy, was ministering to the... To the Lord. That's intimacy. And for a season, the priests of the sons of Eli will be allowed to do church stuff. Will be allowed to preach, to teach. I was always amazed to see preachers whom I thought highly of preach and teach and work in deliverance. And then the news came out that they, they fell in adultery. Or they were living in adultery while doing that. I said, how, Lord, how, how is it possible for a pastor to function in an anointing, but yet they did not know you? How? 
Romans chapter 11 verse 29. For God's gifts and his calling, it says, are irrevocable. King James says, without repentance. And for a season, you will be allowed to function. I could get drunk on a Saturday night, come up here, grab a microphone and preach, and then the anointing will still work. The gift will still work. I didn't do that, so calm down. I'm not planning on doing it. But for a season, the Lord will use me. Numbers 32, verse 23. But if you do not so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord. And be sure that your sin will find you out. One day, your sin, your hidden sin will find you out. And you will blame the pastor and you will blame the, 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 the leaders and everybody. But it's you. You will get offended and you will leave the church and it's not my fault. It's their f no, it's actually the sin in your life that will expose you one day. Because the word of God says that one day your sin will find you out. Church, you want anointing? Anointing in the, is expensive. We have to walk in holiness. There was a priesthood of Eli, one that was corrupted, one that was fallen, one that was in sin. But there was also a priesthood of the sons of Zadok. These priests says in verse, uh, in, in verse 15, 16, 17, that these priests shall come close to me. We are called to meet Jesus Christ in the holies of holies. For too long, we have been busy in the outer court. Doing church stuff in the outer court. If you want anointing, you have to go in the inner court, in, 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 a, in a holy of holies. Lord Jesus is looking for intimacy, for a personal relationship. Preaching, teaching, singing without communion with the Lord is dangerous. Casting out demons without communion with the Lord is dangerous. Oh, I can sin. You see, I can still preach. Oh, I can sin. See, the anointing is still flowing. Yes, for a season. The Lord is looking for communion. The sons... Of Zadok. We're preaching, we're teaching, we're doing church stuff. But these sons, the Bible says that they knew the Lord. Hallelujah. In Second Chronicles chapter 7, actually 6 and 7. When Solomon built a temple, the Bible says that the priests cleansed themselves, fasted, consecrated themselves. And as they were doing their priestly duties, as they were doing ministry in the church, and after the king prayed the blessing, it says that the Shekinah glory fell on the temple. The glory of God came in the temple. And then you look in Ezekiel chapter 10. When the glory of God was lifted from the temple, you know what happened? The priests were doing priestly stuff. The pastors were preaching, teaching, Sunday school, evangelism, feeding the homeless. But they were not near God. They did not know God. They didn't know God in intimacy. There was no relationship. There was only religion. And you can read in Ezekiel chapter 10, 
when the cherubim lifted up above the, the temple and the glory of God was lifted up from the temple. The glory of God will descend upon your ministry when you look for Jesus in intimacy. Hallelujah. Don't expect anointing without a personal life of holiness. Don't expect to be used by God, to be promoted by God in an office without personal holiness. That is suicidal. Don't expect God to lift you up, to use you, unless you walk in personal holiness. Unless you draw near to Him. Unless you seek Him. Matthew chapter 6, you ought to go in your closet and spend time with Him. Without personal holiness, you'll do it once or twice or three times. You won't be able to do it every day. The people that seek God every day in the closet. The people that seek God every day in the secret room. These are the people that walk in personal holiness. These are the people that will be filled with anointing. Hallelujah. I want anointing. But I don't want anointing without personal holiness. I don't want anointing without personal holiness. You know what happens, by the way, to the sons of Aaron? Sons of Aaron, they were priests. And the Bible says that they got drunk. That's why I don't, I don't agree with people that drink to preach. And the Bible says, actually, that they cannot be pastors. You know what happened to these two priests? They got drunk, and they brought strange fire on the altar. The fire of God consumed them, killed them. And they were the sons of Aaron, the high priest. On the spot, they died. Be careful. You want to be used by God? Be careful. Seek first that you know him in the secret room. Seek first that you know him in intimacy. Then God can use you publicly. Before David was used publicly and he killed the giant, he knew the Lord secretly. He knew the Lord on the pasture where nobody saw him. It was just him and the Lord. Speaks here, by the way, watch this. Verse 17, if you don't mind, put it up. Ezekiel 44. The priests of Zadok, the sons of Zadok, had linen garments. And then chapter, verse 18, linen turbans. You know what is said on the turbans? Holy unto God. It said they had linen undergarments. In Romanian it says ismene. These are what you wore behind the priestly robes. Nobody saw it. They knew they had it and God knew. Holiness. Listen, I can, don't tell me how great you are by, the, by how you preach. Because I can fake it. Don't tell me how good you are by, by how you, you, you help others, by how you serve, by how you sing. It's the holiness that only you know and God. Are we still friends? Hello? I can hide. I can fake pastor. I can fake everyone else here. Maybe if you want to know who I am, you ask my wife. You want to know who you are? I should ask your wife. I should ask your husband. I should ask your children. That is Marcel. Marcel is who Angie will tell you Marcel is. But beyond that, Marcel is who God says he is. 
Because underneath these clothes, I can hide a person and expose you to be uh, good looking, good, dressed, nice. Adina already complimented my suit. She likes my suit. But what's inside, it's only I know and God. Those undergarments are behind this priestly robe, priestly robe. Only he can see and I can see. Are you with me? It's important that we walk the talk, not just talk the talk. It's time that we live a life of holiness. Before pastor announced that this year will be the year of an anointing, I made a choice in my family that this year will be a year of personal holiness. And I think it fits well. I think it fits well. Because without personal holiness, you will not receive anointing. Amen? So why is it that holiness is so important? Two things. There's more, but two things. Because first of all, God is holy. Isaiah chapter 6 gives us a, a, an image of these, these amazing angels, by the way, called seraphims. I think they took Seraphina from those angels. She's an angel, by the way. Angelic name, beautiful name. These seraphims will fly around the throne of God. And every time they come around the throne of God, they receive a revelation of who God is. And do you know what they say? They say, holy, 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 wow, holy is God Almighty. And then they fly again and they come around the throne of God. And then again, they receive another revelation of who God is. And they say, holy, holy, holy is God Almighty. The habitat of heaven is holiness. The environment of God, of, 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 of heaven, is holiness. You want to have fellowship with him? We ought to look at our lives. We ought to live a life of personal holiness. Amen. Levit Leviticus chapter 19 verse 2, please, Nicole. Speak to all the congregation of the sons of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. It's not an option. It's mandatory. Hebrews 12, 14. Pursue peace with all people and the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Reason number two. The bride is holy. Jesus is coming back soon, guys. And he's coming for a bride that is holy. Ephesians 5 Verse 27, please, Nicole. That, my, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such things, but that she would be holy and blameless. Hallelujah. You want to be the bride of, God, of, of Christ? Seek personal holiness. In conclusion... If you don't mind, Nicole, 2 Timothy verse, chapter 2, verse 20. Maybe this short sermon today convicted you. He said, yes, I preached, Lord, I preached. I'm the, I'm, 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 I'm the son of Eli. I'm the priest of the sons of Eli. I preached, I taught Sunday school. I... Um, I sang in worship, I did media, I did, uh, I did maybe kitchen, I did volunteering, I did whatever ministry you do in the church. And when nobody saw me, I, I, I was looking at the junk on the internet. When nobody was seeing me, I was, I was indulging in vaping or I don't know why I have to say this. Alcohol or cigarettes or whatever. What do I do now? 
there's a promise here that I'm going to read. That if you do your part, God will do his. It says, now in a large house, everybody say large house. This church is a great house. Come on, say great house. There are not only gold and silver implements. Another translation said vessels. But also implements of wood and earthenware. And some are for honor while others are for dishonor. Look at the promise in verse 21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself, another translation says, purges himself. Lydia has a baby. Lydia, would you put milk in a dirty bottle and give it to Serafina? She wouldn't do it. Why do you think that God will put anointing in a dirty vessel? I drink tea every day and a little bit of coffee. Before I do it, I go and wash my cup. I have a special cup at my work. And then I can drink the tea. If you want to be used by God, I have to, the, the Lord is reminding you today that you have to clean yourself. Oh, Lord, sanctify me. And then tomorrow I'm back in it. No, you have to live a life of holiness. You have to know Him in intimacy. Don't hide behind ministry. That's dangerous. Oh, didn't I preach? Didn't I cast out demons? Depart from me for I did not. I did not know you. I did not know you in intimacy. I did not know you in the secret room. You never had communion with me. Yes, you preached. Yes, you taught. Yes, you sang. Yes, you did all the stuff. But you did not know me. If anyone cleanses himself, it's your part. It's my part. From these things, he will be an implement, a vessel for honor, sanctified, useful to the master, prepared for every good work. Are you ready for anointing? Hallelujah, I'm ready. But before anointing, make sure you seek personal holiness. Hello? Amen? Amen? Let's all stand, church. We're going to praise God. We don't have time for an altar call. I would have been the first one, honestly. But maybe we're going to pray another time when we'll have enough time to pray for this. But we're going to sing a song, and then Pastor Tokai is going to um, uh, continue with the service. God bless you, church.